Shalom. Our Torah portion for this week is actually a double portion. It's Vayakel Pekudei. There are seven portions in the Torah, and depending on how many Sabbaths we have in the year, sometimes when we have fewer Sabbaths in the year, we combine uh, two uh, of these portions. Sometimes we read them separately. This year, uh, we read Vayakel and Pekudei together. I want to draw your attention to the opening words of Vayakel. Um, because I think, it's, I think it's very significant about how we live our Jewish lives. Uh, let's take a look at what it says here in the Hebrew. Vayakel Moshe et kol adat b'nei Yisrael vayomer alehem ele hadvarim asher tziva adonai lazot otam sheshet yamim Te melacha uvayom hashvi'i yihye lechem kodesh shabbat shabbaton ladonai kol hause vo melacha yumat lo tevaru esh bechol moshvotechem beyom hashabbat. Moses then convoked the whole Israelite community and said to them, these are the things that the Eternal has commanded you to do. On six days work may be done, but on the seventh day you shall have uh, a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the Eternal. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your settlements on the Sabbath day. Now, first of all, I want to look at the word vayakel. It's translated here as convoked. Moses convoked the Israelites. He brought the Jewish people together uh, and he began to expound on some of the laws. And the first law that he expands uh, or expounds on is the law about the Sabbath. Now, the word vayakel can be understood in a number of ways. It certainly can be translated as convoked, to call together a convocation to, to assemble the people. But it is very similar to the word kahal, which means congregation. Both, both of these words come from the same Hebrew root. So what we, we might uh, translate the word vayakel as to make a congregation. Making a congregation is a very, very important law or a very, very important thing to do in Jewish life. Yes, you can be Jewish on your own in isolation, but you truly cannot live a Jewish life, a, a rich, beautiful Jewish life outside of the community. In this day and age, fewer and fewer Jews are associating with, with synagogues. They're saying, well, we'll do it at home, or we don't really need to belong to a synagogue. And I believe that uh, that uh, is very unfortunate. It's unfortunate for uh, the people who do not belong to the synagogue. It's, it's unfortunate for their own personal spiritual well-being. And it's also unfortunate, and it's, uh, and it's a negative trend, for the entire Jewish people. Um, now, what does it mean that uh, if you do not, uh, uh, if you do not observe the Sabbath, that you will die? That sounds a bit harsh. None of us would really uh, take that literally. Uh, but I think what that is pointing out. I think what uh, how we can understand that in this day and age is that if those people who do not come to the synagogue uh, on, on Shabbat. Those people who stay away from their community at least, uh, on Shabbat are, in a sense, dooming their own Jewish spirits. They're not growing as Jews. They're not learning about Jewish tradition. They're not associating with other Jewish people. And in a sense, um, they are dooming 
um, their own Jewish identity and the survival of the Jewish people. In the Talmud we, we read, he who does not enter a synagogue in this world will not enter a synagogue in the world to come. So if you don't enter this building, this material building, this external physical temple, or a temple like it, then you are doing damage to that temple, that sanctuary within your own heart. There's a beautiful midrash that tells us that when a person who is a regular at synagogue doesn't turn up on a Shabbat, we're told that God asks about that person, that God misses that person. Where is she on this Sabbath? Or where is he on this Sabbath? And then when it goes on to say, uh, just as an aside, I suppose, as a second a lesson that we can take from that passage that I just read about not, about not burning fires, not kindling fires on Shabbat. Now, we can take that literally, that is not to have a barbecue on uh, Saturday afternoon and um, uh, not to, uh, not to uh, uh, burn our leaves uh, during the fall on a Saturday afternoon. But I believe it means something else. I believe that it means that we should live peacefully. We shouldn't burn fires within our own hearts with contentious arguments or, uh, or anything of the sort on the Sabbath. That we should, we should come together in our family settings, in our community settings, with joyous hearts, and uh, without, uh, without uh, disputes, putting our disputes aside, our arguments aside, and to live in peace so that we might say to each other with, with absolute sincerity, Shabbat Shalom. May you have a, a peaceful Shabbat. Now I hope that you read this week's Torah portion and come to your own conclusion. And, and I say to you with a full heart, Shabbat Shalom. Shimon, <laughs> Kun